But I am doing a world-famous Dynamite review. Show opened with Chris Jericho and Konosuke Takeshita against Sammy Guevara and Daniel Garcia. Long story short, Don Callis hit Garcia with the baseball bat as Garcia had Jericho and a lion tamer, and Jericho looked confused and remorseful, sort of, but he still took the win and didn't lay into Callis. But, uh, yeah. Daniel Garcia, as much as I like his dancing, Let's not let's not go too far with this year with the dancing, okay? Can we can we spread this out a little bit? I like the the aggression in the dancing. If you're if you're out there at a club anywhere near Daniel Garcia, you may want to look out a little bit. It's almost Saturday Night Live worthy with uh, Chris Kattan and uh, and Will Ferrell out there. But you know the hips are swiveling, and Daniel Garcia is going to have a good time. So there you go. <laughs> We'll get to a little bit more when it comes to the Jericho Appreciation Society in a moment. It was then time for Tony Khan to step in, and he said it. Good. Much like the hug coming back with Roosh, two hugs at that. He brought it back. They threw it to Tony, and he said, thanks, guys. Pop for that. Don't let the haters get you, Tony. Sure, they're going to make fun of you about that. They're going to make fun of you about everything. I just want to poke some fun, and I like that. I like the thank us, guys. And he used that uh, introduction to then roll out a short video. And I thought at first he's like, you know, oh, we got to thank all of the men and women here who have made this thing possible. I actually thought it was going to be like when Fox on Thanksgiving shows the NFL, and then they run down a list of names, and it's like, okay, you're going to see that. You know, a, a bunch of pictures of people in the back, like, you know, the woman who, the nice lady working PR, and you know, maybe Will Washington doing something in a corner, and who, who was that nice seamstress lady? You know, we get, no. It was just basically a highlight video of everything which has taken place on the show. The first images you see are Cody Rhodes and Brandy. You see LAX. You see some folks who aren't there anymore. But I thought it was a really good video. We then go to break. When we come back from break, Renee Paquette has chased down Jericho, who has turned into, in the last couple of weeks, a lost, wet, and cold dog. I mean, that's what he kind of looks like with the hair coming down, like a, like kind of an untrimmed golden retriever, just a long-haired golden retriever out there, and he's just stumbling around. He doesn't know what's going on. There's this 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 guy he he, he sort of likes who gave him a treat, but then he's got his his family over here, and he's he's just completely he, he's completely out of it. And then Renee starts to ask him what's going on, but before she could ask. Daddy Magic ran up on Jericho and told him there's a mandatory JAS meeting next week and Jericho will be there. And Jericho said nothing and he continued to look around and look dazed and confused. Maybe not the first time Chris Jericho has looked like that. Kidding. But what is weird about this is, I mean, look what he just did to his people. Do we really need to have a JAS meeting? Why don't all of you just beat his rear end? I almost said it. I didn't, though. See? Got to be good when it uh, Brian's not here. No cursing. But why they just didn't beat him up, I don't know. Why? Because we have to have a segment with everybody in the ring, and Jake Hager has got to once again officially turn in his purple bucket hat, I guess. I don't know which direction that's going to go, but what I could see, what I could see is Jake Hager staying with Chris Jericho, and Chris Jericho staying with Don Callis and Konosuke Takeshita, and maybe they pluck off, probably not Daniel Garcia, but maybe they pluck off somebody else. You know, I think Sammy Guevara, it's time for him to be a good guy. I don't know what you do with Anna Jay, you know, frankly, you know, right now, maybe to me, I you separate her completely from the group, put her with jungle boy i think he'll get more heat that way you know having her out there and then they could you know slime it up you know to an insane degree you know the the obnoxious kissing and things like that i mean to me it would just benefit his heat if she was over there with him but we'll see what happens with the jericho appreciation society and the bad news brown inspired <laughs> The bad news Alan Coach inspired uh, Don Callis family. Speaking of Jack Perry, 
He came to the ring and called out Jerry Lynn. JL said he wouldn't go down there and kick Perry's rear end because that would be child abuse. And he said, well, you know, it wouldn't be cleared anyway. So he introduces ECW original Rob Van Dam. Perry bailed, but then tried to roll back in and hit RVD from behind with a chair. He whiffed, but avoided the Van Daminator and ran out through the crowd. To show how long it's been since ECW and the old people will know what I'm talking about, almost no one was chanting along with Pantera during Walk. Okay, at the end, when he was going back up the ramp, it sounded like they ISO'd uh, some people in the crowd that were, you know, doing the whole respect Walk thing, but most of them were chanting RVD. I don't think, do the kids know Pantera at this point 30 years later? I don't know. Hikaru Shida and Tony Storm had a video package to promote their match that was coming up later on in the, in the night. Then there was a three-way match. Hardcore style. Just, to me, it was more of a cluster with all the plunder and whatnot. The live crowd loved it. They loved it more than me watching at home, for sure. Everybody had a turn in the thumbtacks and through the tables. Finish came when John Moxley hit the uh, paradigm shift on Penta. Led to Trent, who Trent, I tell you what, though, you know, no matter what you thought about the match, Trent was the guy who just took the biggest, most brutal beating during it to the point where I was figuring he was going to win. I was hoping for his sake he was going to win. He waylaid Moxley with a knee, end up stealing the victory. Got a pop for Taz mentioning former Cincinnati Bengals linebacker Jim LeClaire out of nowhere. Maybe Taz saw him when he was playing with the New Jersey Generals in the USFL in the mid-80s. I don't know. But after the match, the BBB almost said it, the BCC, then came down to the ring, but were cut off by Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy. Eventually, Cassidy hit the orange punch on Moxley, and then the best friends challenged the BCC to a parking lot brawl that would take place at Daly's Place. It's being taped today, which is why the news came out last week that Moxley was being pulled from tonight's Pro Wrestling Revolver Heat 'em Up show, which is taking place in Dayton. Not a bad replacement. You're getting Kanosuke Takeshita in Moxley's place. Now, they've also advertised Leo Rush as well. Again, with his shoulder situation, we'll see how that goes. It was then time for the MJF segment. He's got rejection-sensitive dysphoria because of ADHD. I get sick sometimes of the MJF backstory, but if they ever wanted to go out of the realm and actually like have a MJF like graphic novel or you do something on Max where all of a sudden he's now sucked into the DC universe or whatever it is that they owned. I mean, you know, you, you got enough backstory here to go with it. You really do. Uh, he says he's been bullied. He's been abused. He's been cheated on. He's been lied to. He's been battered, beaten up, a victim of anti-Semitism. He figured everyone was a terrible person. And to get anywhere in this cruel world, he would just have to be a scumbag. And being a scumbag is easy, but and to get people to boo him is easy, but to be open and vulnerable, well... You know, that was going to be tough. But he's not scared anymore, and it's because of every fan out there. You know, they taught him they really do care about Max. It's not just about MJF. And he said he won't change overnight because he's still a scumbag, which then they chanted scumbag. But, you know, he wants to be your scumbag. That brought out Adam Cole, or he ended up bringing out Adam Cole. He wants to thank him. Cole says he appreciates what MJF is doing. He's amazing at such a young age in the wrestling business. Cole reminds him he's not alone in his struggles. He says he acted like a jerk, too, for years. He says it was because he didn't understand what being a man was. But now he does. And MJF, he's turning into what a man should be. MJF says he loves the oratory oral that was being performed on him by Cole. But he's got something for Adam. And he says he didn't really deserve a match for the world title. He deserved a match for the world title on the biggest possible stage. He grabbed a contract, opened it up. It is going to be at All In, Adam Cole, MJF, for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Cole says that he loves Max. Max says that he loves Cole. They embrace. Then they pose in opposite corners of the ring. And much like last week, we have a Roddy Strong blow-up. Much like last week... He's not really all that convincing doing these things. You know, the whole yelling and screaming last week, and now he's supposed to have a temper tantrum where he's kind of sort of throwing some things that they've left around him around. Eh. 
interesting part about this is Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, who were associated with Adam Cole way back in the day with the kingdom, they walk up and tell him, Adam Cole, he's always forgetting about his real friends. They kind of let that go from there. Six-man tag, the elite defeated Satnam Singh, Jeff Jarrett, and Jay Lethal. I was sports entertained. I mean, that's all you got to say about that. Bucks comedy with Satnam, the heels all doing the elite pose. Omega and Jarrett together. Lethal and Omega together, for that matter, for me. It was great. Omega teased a one-win angle angel at one point against Satnam, but uh, this is all leading to, and the the elite obviously won, but this is all leading to... Uh, what looks to be Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal against the Hardy Boys. And I got to be honest, in its own little bubble as a rampage type of match, as a collision type of match, you know, with some other stuff on those shows, I don't I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. After the match, the Elite all cut a promo about resigning in AEW. A little later on, we got Aussie Open defeating El Hio de Vikingo and Commander to hold on to the ROH titles. And in the main event, Hikaru Shida won the AEW Women's Championship from Tony Storm, but the video promo from Swerve Strickland and AR Fox, where Fox asked if Darby Allen was so indebted to him, why hadn't he heard from Darby for five years? Swerve then plays a tape of Swerve and Fox going to the Buddy Wayne Academy, beats up Nick, beats up whoever Nick's training partner was. They smash a picture of Buddy and Nick together over Nick Wayne's head. Nick blades like and bleeds all over the place like he's Bobby Heenan in the 1970s. Swerve then leaves the picture on the part of the ring where Nick was when he found out his daddy died. Cold-blooded. Nick makes a crawl for his phone. Swerve grabs it. He makes him call Darby. He doesn't want to, but Fox picks up a shard of glass, and he's basically holding it to Nick's neck. Swerve then tells Darby, we're the ghost of your past, and this is just the beginning. I had one little itsy-bitsy problem with this, and that was it was so violent. They should have done what they used to do back in the day and come up with a reason as to why Prince Nana or somehow Prince Nana, like J.J. Dillon, was able to pay to get this thing onto the broadcast. It was crazy, crazy. We'll be back, Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. I got to pick some nits. I do, I do. I don't know if I necessarily would have had that hardcore match. I know it's the show number 200, but when you have violence... When you have violence in the way that they had violence with that Swerve Strickland AR Fox visit to Buddy Wayne's uh, academy and slaughtering Nick and leaving him laying in a pool of his own blood. And by the way, I remember people that had their, you know, uh, looking for the right term here. But boy, when he took some skewers from Atticus Kogar and GCW, oh, the, the horror and the humanity. Well, you know what? Get used to that. He's going to be a guy who gets picked on. He gets beat up a lot. He's an 18-year-old kid in the wrestling business, and he's on the way up. Yeah, he's a prodigy, but these are grown men like Swerve Strickland who have been around a long time. So, yeah, he's got to learn how to bleed. He's got to learn how to get his butt kicked. And, boy, he's going to be doing a lot of that in this feud. He already has already. I mean, crazy, crazy. I didn't like how they came back to and didn't really sell it. Tony Schiavone says, wow. And Excalibur just kind of rolls on. It's like A.R. Fox had a shard of glass at this man's throat. Look at the pool of blood he's in. I thought there was more danger to be had there. And I thought there was a, a way to do a gimmick where you didn't want to put this on your TV. But somehow, some way, Prince Nana wanted him to do it. The only comment I'm going to have about MJF is when you find a better heel to replace him, go ahead and do that. If that's Samoa Joe or Adam Cole or any of that sort of stuff. But that's the bottom line. Talk to Brian. He says, well, anybody can do it. No, anybody can't do it. If MJF is your biggest baby face, you need some heels too. Maybe that's going to be Adam Cole. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. They need to steal one more piece of business from the Saturday Night Main Event, if you will. And that's the green screen for those opening promos. Put something behind them, like, you know, we're FTR, you know, have no fits or whatever behind the, just something. Like what you got behind you right now. He's in an empty room. Ready? Boom! Huh? Hey, look at that. Now Lance is a star. Hey guys, did you love this clip? 
If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.